What is up, everybody? We're back with more Netrunner. My name is Dad Radish, and I am your vegetable father. Uh, we're back to uh, do another gateway uh, booster replay. Um, so I have uh, three themes to kind of talk about in this game. Uh, the first theme is going to be put ice on R&D. Um, it's a mistake I make a lot. Um, I don't know what the cards are in R&D. It doesn't matter. Uh, so um, that's something that we're going <laughs> to we're going to see the effects of. Um, the second sort of theme or question is um, the card, the runner card, Wildcat Strike. Um, there's this sort of um, cards or credits question that I thought was resolved, but um, we'll, we'll have to talk it through and see. And um, there's the sort of end of game uh, pressure where um, I have a choice to make and we'll see uh, if I end up making the right one. So uh, props to uh, Chill Hop Music for the audio we're hearing in the back here. And uh, yeah, let's sort of jump into it. So uh, these are the booster decks. These are the 40 card um, ones that you play, kind of graduate from the starters um, in System Gateway. Um, this is the Syndicate. Um, and uh, I'm playing against the runner who's playing Catalyst. So uh, let's kind of start with our sort of keep mulligan um, plan here. So uh, how do I feel about this? I have some ice, I have Palisade. Uh, two Diviners. Um, I have Urtica Cipher, which is a fun fun to have in the opening, and then Seamless Launch, which is great to see um, a card that can um, kind of either on Urtica, I can make make this more threatening more quickly or more damaging more quickly, um, or uh, if I get an agenda, it can it can help me out a little bit. So the clear missing thing from this opening is an economy card. I'm kind of um, gambling here a little bit, but I like that there is ice in the sand already. So. That's kind of the gamble. Um, so then I uh, pull the Regolith Mining License. Happy to see that. So my opening play here is um, install an HQ, install over HQ, <laughs> install over um, a new server, and then get the Regolith in there. Um, and then, yeah, that's how I open things up. Um, what I don't know is that the runner has Conduit. Um, and so uh, that makes, I think, their opening pretty clear here. Um, so they drop the conduit and immediately I go, oh, oh no, <laughs> this is going to be a big problem. I could lose the game, uh, pretty quickly. Um, so then they make, uh, three quick runs here and stack up three counters on conduit. Um, so we can kind of jump through that and, uh, yeah, let's, um, that's that's them building up three counters on Conduit in, at the end of uh, their turn one. So turn two starts, and what my mandatory draw was... Um, yeah, at this point they've seen the top three cards of R&D, and I'm lucky, I think... Mm, yeah, considering I had no agendas in my opening hand, I'm pretty lucky that they didn't find anything yet. Um, but it's only a matter of time with three counters on Conduit. Um... Something I haven't really thought about is would it have been right to just uh, to purge right now? <laughs> it's the beginning of the game. Like they've spent all their money to get these credits. Like this is the main thing that they've done with their turns. So should I, should I, I guess I, I guess if I think this through, I should purge right now. Um, then they just run again. But if I ice up R&D, like do I purge early? Um, I guess that's another theme of this is uh, when to purge because this is already a little bit outrageous. Any successful run on R&D is going to um, dig dig three cards. Multi-access. All right, so I draw a hedge fund. I'm happy to see it. Um, good to see more economy happening. Um, and I don't start up with the regolith. Um, I'm, I'm more worried about the situation happening here. I don't feel super satisfied putting Diviner on there. Um, it is sort of a conditional. Um, it, it's it's a little more conditional than I think than I I want it to be. Um, but I didn't get it in my draw, so I figured I'd. Uh, this is a thing, right? Um, kind of a conventional network thing. Put your draw 
first in your uh it as your order if uh in, in your turn order um put your draw click um early on so that if it changes your plan gives you something uh better than then you can do it so i think i position that sort of um first up don't get anything uh so i uh i install the diviner and then um yeah So yeah, draw, install ice, and then play hedge fund. That's sort of where I go with it. Okay. So runner goes. So they're uh, they're in badly in need of economy, so that's what they do. They install the telework contract. Um, very inexpensive. Uh, good card. Um, they click up, and then... Uh, let's see. Yeah, they gain three. They can only use it once per turn. And then they use Wildcat Strike, so this is, you know, this tricky, uh, this is my sort of tricky challenge here. Do I gain, or do I have the runner gain six, or do I give them four cards? Um, okay, so I thought the early discourse on this was like, credits is always, the almost always the right choice. I've heard um, in other venues that cards is always the right choice. Um, and I struggled a bit here. Um, my sort of last read on this was, well, they only have one credit, so if I give them lots of cards, then they they will need more credits to actually do something with them. So um, I went cards. Um, that's what I gave them. And, you know, lo and behold, like they went up to one more than their hand size, uh, but then they have the creative commission um, for one credit, which uh, gives them five and is the last thing you do in your click. So I kind of gave them the perfect hand for it. Um, so they go up and, and yeah, so, so I don't know, Cre like credits in that situation better probably. Um, it means they have to spend more time um, drawing cards. I, you know, that in that situation, probably, uh, probably credits. And maybe the the thing that matters here is hand size, or you know what's going on in their hand right now. So at this point, they have two cards in hand. If filling them up brings them to six. They'll only have to discard one thing. It's not impossible to play one card. Um, so yeah, maybe that's the that's the additional factor to sort of uh, make that for making that decision. All right, it's my turn. I pull a white space. Um, that's cool. Uh, it's going to be useful, I think. So um, I am feeling the pressure a little bit here. I haven't seen the agendas. Um, that conduit is still sitting there. Um, I got to I gotta get something done. I don't feel super great at seven credits. Um, so I want to see more options. That's why I draw. I want to try and see if I can get an agenda in hand. Um, so I can kind of make more decisions about it. But um, I get the Arctic instead. So this was um, uh, clicking the regolith for, for funds. And uh, now I feel a little bit better um, hanging out at 13. Uh, but I do sense at this stage that um, I'm I'm feeling a little slow. And the runner has like, they're not, they're not rich, but they have the resources on board. They have some things getting set up. So they install a leech. And then they get down the Unity, which is a code gate breaker, and that uh, that scares me a little bit. I know they can't get, I, well, as far as I know, they can't get into the remote now, but these are both code gates, so uh, R&D and HQ become porous again. So they uh, use the telework contract and gain one, uh, so that puts them at a, um, a decent five, um, which, you know, they can uh, spend on Unity to get through uh, Diviner pretty easily. All right, my mandatory draw is a government subsidy, so cool, more money. And uh, here, what's going through my mind here? I don't draw here because I kind of, I think this is the point where I'm kind of like, I don't have one. Um, uh, I should, uh, you know, maybe Artica is the play. Um, and that's actually not what I do. I, I dirtle even more than install more ice on the server. Um, but I, you know, I have this regolith. I might as well take the money off of it. Eighteen feels, you know, quite nice. Um, in the the back of my mind, there's a public trail. There's also I'm I'm looking for opportunities to play public trail. Runner is um, uh, pretty consistently ending under eight credits, so I feel like I can land the tag on most turns. But I don't have a have a way to punish it. Uh, the telework contract didn't feel like it was going to be the thing that I was going to um, going to use or or use the tag on. Um, since if the runner's tagged, the Recorp can play, uh, use a credit or use a click and two credits um, to trash any resource. What I really want is um, uh, Retribution, which will let me um, kill the conduit, and I'm, I'm really hoping for that. Um, so, yeah. All right. Runner goes. 
So runner plays their sure gamble. Um, they're up to um, an even more respectable nine credits. I know they can they can play stuff. Um, so yeah, so we have this interaction here. They uh, run with conduit. I choose to res. They break for three. Um, and they get to R&D. And uh, I think I had sort of the feeling that this was going to do a little bit more work for me. Um, but it wasn't, as it turned out, it wasn't taxing enough. Um, and uh, yeah, they, they get to see uh, uh, four cards. Um, they steal the orbital superiority. One, wait, one, two, three, four. Yeah, they uh, trash an eco campaign and they trash a uh, regolith mining license. So um, yeah, so they uh, yeah got an agenda and and uh, and a few um, economy cards for me and a counter on conduit. So that kind of previews what my next turn is. So I do the purge action, and the purge action is you spend three clicks and it um, wipes off all virus tokens on the board. Um, Stepping back a little bit, there's just too much value now. Um, and maybe I should have done it before. Maybe, um, I don't know, let's walk back a little bit. This was the turn? I don't know. Three is pretty absurd. Um, and maybe it's just, I, I didn't respect it enough. So. so anyway, this whole turn is just clearing, uh, clearing uh, those fire scanners. So runner goes. Um, they uh they draw first and i don't know it but they get a barrier breaker so um they use a teller contract they run on hq just to see what's up uh let me kind of step through that a little more i res diviner they encounter they break for three um they get through they they see a seamless launch so that's good. Um, they didn't see the public trail there, or I guess they know I have public trail because of that deep dig they got into R&D before, so they probably know about it, but they haven't been playing around it. Um, I do have the seamless launch. So they drop. It's my turn. Get Palisade. Um, I'm happy to see it. It does a little bit more in the server, even though, um, you know, they have the cleaver, so. So I kind of wrap up with the model, model, uh, the regolith mining license, and I'm like, let me get one of these Urtica ciphers out of here. So representing like it's an agenda. So uh, runner clicks. They have the the cleaver, and you know this was one reason why I didn't um, install double advance this. Um, that is sort of the decision I had here at this point. I could just overwrite this with an Urtica cipher. Um, and then advance, advance. Um, as it turns out, probably would have been a good play. Um, but I didn't know that they were they were going to be able to get through the Palisade. I was worried about the mind game of like resing one ice, but not resing the other ice. I have the money to do it. So not resing ice is kind of a, a, a tricky symbol to the runner, I think. Um, I think a savvy runner would, would, would read that play and maybe jack out before um, accessing cards. So. So they gain a credit. They go ahead and put it down. They uh, only they gain one more credit, and then they run uh, with overclock, which gives them uh, you know more credits, the credits they need to go ahead and make it through. Whoops, did not mean to click that. Sorry, sorry. Okay, so they go ahead and uh, hit the ice. I did a calculation there, thinking that um, the white space wasn't a good res here because it might actually. Um, Actually, I don't know if they can pay for this with um, credits off of overclock. But in any case, I, there was too much of a concern that with this and this, they might they might bounce. Um, anyway, it might uh, send a play pattern that wouldn't lead them to the Urtica. So I res Palisade. They're able to pay for it um, off of the uh, off of the overclock. Um, it costs three. They access, and then I I use the ability. It trashes out a. Let's see if we can do this stuff. The mutual favor, the tread lightly and jailbreak. Um, so very close to to um, a flat line there. One more advancement token on this. When the runner access act this asset while it is installed, do two net damage plus one net damage for each hosted advancement counter. So one more in there, um, and we get the win. But um, 
I was happy there to take the the slowdown and momentum, and I felt kind of good at this point. I said, okay, there's room for me to kind of take this game back. Um, and lo and behold, I get the off-world office, and so this is a pretty quick install, advance, advance. All right, so runner's turn. So they got a click up for cards. They install the smart word distributor. Oh wait, uh, sorry, there's an undo click there. So uh, let's see, let's. Ah, mm -hmm. They take a they take one credit there. So again, I have momentum on my side here, right? So uh, this is pretty straightforward for me. I get a draw. I play the government subsidy. It feels right to sort of. Um, uh, get it out of hand, keep my hand size at five, and, and just keep up with the credits. And then advance, advance. Scored out, gain seven, 21 credits. That feels nice, right? Still looking for opportunities to public trail, like, like make that the right play. So now the smart road distributor comes down, gets a click, they draw. Um, all right. So I get the tithe. Um, I draw again. Um, I, you know, I have this this window of opportunity um, to put stuff in the server and have it. Um, uh, I use it sort of like a bet, right? They don't have the overclock, like they don't have a uh, mayfly. There, there's things sort of that might keep them out. Um, so let's see. More ice. I can put more ice on. I can afford the ice that I that goes on there. Um, ISAP archives. So, um, yeah, you know, they can, they can get through with their breaker suite. So I just, I need to make it more, more taxing, more difficult. And, um, the Karuna feels like the right thing to do here. Um, okay. They're clicking up for credits. They play sure gamble. They're back to nine, which is decent. Then they install verbal plasticity, um, to be able to draw cards more quickly. Um, the first time each turn you take the basic action to draw one card instead to draw two cards great uh fun card to play feels really good to draw cards there so now i'm hitting sort of like this band of agendas that were in my deck so um so they're all kind of hitting me now um and this one's a tricky decision so this is one of those um decision points that i was talking about um here it's kind of i have the urtica that i've been sitting on from the beginning of the game or um, either of these two agendas. Um, I have a seamless launch, so the uh, five point agenda is not, or, or the five uh, advancement requirement agenda is not as far out of reach as it would, it would normally seem. So what do I do here? Um, I'm really <laughs> quite thirsty for the orbital superiority kill. Um, I have public trail in hand, I could get them tagged, um, and I could uh, uh, res or, or, or score orbital superiority and get them. So that uh, becomes really attractive and that becomes the play that I'm trying to make happen here. So um, I install, advance, advance. So with this, uh, oh, that actually isn't what I do, sorry. <laughs> I walk it back. Um, I say, okay, there's time for the Urtica, so I put it here. And this, I think, was a was a pretty big mistake. Um, you can even see from from sort of the way that I, I kind of imagined a better world for myself there. Um, uh, I made the server less attractive to get into by adding ice to it, um, and then and then played played a trap on it. Um, this felt very honest to me because um, you know I'm like, well, this is what I want to do with the orbital superiority. <laughs> so um, so I kind of represent that. And then the runner, um, let's see what what the runner does. Um, they go ahead and do their verbal plasticity draw. It gets them two cards. Feels very good. They get down another leech. Um, oh no, wait, that uh, pulls their, that takes them over MU. So they do uh, DZMZ optimizer first. They install the leech. Then they run on R&D, smart. Um, they pay three to get by. Actually, they don't have to pay three anymore. They can they can just pay one, because Unity um, comes up to uh, three strength um, just by paying one uh, one credit. So they get one card, but they get leech counters. They get um, con uh, they get a, a virus counter and conduit just value all over the place. Um, Okay, so this is another sort of crucial turn here. I pull the Funhouse and I remember thinking, should I Funhouse R&D? It, it 
um, I need to make this even more uh, harder to get through. Um, and looking sort of at the board state, it could have been a decent play. It would be end the run unless they take the tag, so they have to take the tag and then uh, give the, the tag unless they pay four. Um, yeah, they might still get through it. You know, they might still take the tag. Uh, just just take the tag, uh, take the two tags. Go tag me here. And I don't have the punishment except for orbital that is going to take some time to get out. Um, I'm actually in a better position in the game if I uh, if I had played the orbital, but I didn't. So I go ahead and do the thing that I should have done, which is I play the orbital. Advance, advance. Runner's turn. They uh, they get some credits. Um, they draw more cards. Get another DZMZ out. They do a conduit run on um, on R and D, and the game ends here. They uh, pull down a Diviner. They get off world office. Um, that's two more agenda points. They're at four. <laughs> And then they get the next copy of send the message right underneath and they win the game so uh so yeah that's it that's that's this is the game that i played um it was it was painful it was very close but there are those three themes um put ice on r d um wildcat strike uh lots of things to think about for cards or credits just try and think about all the things that you've you've seen i learned from from my experiences um and then end of game you know when the pressure's on um you know the there's lots of interesting decisions to make um, I think I played a little too, I played defensively at the wrong time. I put it in the Urtica when I should have put it in the agenda. Um, and then I didn't ice R and D when additional ice may, may have helped. It may have, you know, it may have changed the balance of what the, what the runner was thinking to do there, um, to put ice, it, it might've, um, caused them to, to, um, do a different play pattern. So, yep, that's where we are. Um, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.